Um, I don't regret for a second that I'm you know, 24 and that I am facing a 17-year-old, and um, you know I feel like a veteran in a way. And um, I'm very fortunate that my success came at a young age, but uh, that also makes me feel very old as a 24-year-old um, talking about the the new generation that's coming up. And, and she really, you know, I knew coming into the match that she was going to play great tennis from the beginning. Um, you know, because uh, she. Just swung away, and um, yeah, it was uh, it was a tough first set. You got down an early break in that first set, but yeah. today against uh, an opponent, it was kind of uncomfortable because she didn't yeah, give you a lot of rhythm. Tricky on grass. Tricky yeah. on grass. You got a good start, but yeah. then it became a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Well, she was, she's someone that plays good tennis on grass because she stays so low and um, you know, swings away. Sometimes you don't know if she's going to hit the line and hit a great winner or um, maybe hit you once in a while. So you just have to be ready for everything with her. Clara Zakopalova of yes. the Czech Republic. Uh, you were out on court two. Mm -hmm. There's been a little bit of controversy about uh, the Williams sisters each being shuttled out to court two. But right. you said, you know what, I really don't care where I play here. <laughs> I really don't. I, I actually... I like the new court too. It's a very intimate atmosphere and it reminds me a lot of um the second court on or third court at the Roland Garris where it's kind of a, a bull ring feeling. There's no bad seat in the house and every fan gets a, a great experience there and they see the tennis up close and personal and I think that's really important. Um, you know the one thing that maybe you know they could look at is um, maybe having a few more women's matches on court one or end center as well as opposed to you know two men's and one woman's but um, you know it's just the way it goes. I'm certainly not complaining. I, I love going to court two. Well let's take a look at to. your day on court <laughs> Too. Yes, which I'm sure you love it after the result today. Again, playing a Clara Zakopalova. And uh, we're going to pick it up in the first set with you serving at 4 2. And like we mentioned earlier, you got off to a good start. It seemed yeah. like you were pretty determined early on to take the initiative in the rally. Yeah, I thought that was really important. I think on grass, that's just good grass court tennis if you can take um, you know, the first ball and um, really be aggressive from it. And what always impresses me, Maria, is that when you have a tight situation, a pressure moment, this is what you do. You, you like to go for it. It doesn't matter that it's it maybe a, a nervous moment. You still find a way to go and, and be aggressive. I always feel that that's when I play my best is when I am aggressive and, and I go for my shots. And that's really my game is it when I feel like I step back and maybe wait for my opponent to... To miss is um, is not really my game. That's when I know when I really need to change. Got her thinking around. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a good sign <laughs> for her. You, you got down a break in the in the second. Yeah, but then you picked up your level again. Is there one thing that stands out from this match that you'd like to do better going forward? Yeah, I'd like to move in a little bit more. Um, you know, I felt like I was a little tentative at some points in the match, and um, that's something that I'll, I'll look forward to. In the next into your seventh Wimbledon fourth round. At one point, Maria, we heard you say, come on. <laughs> now, were you talking to yourself, or what, what was that all about? Yeah, I think I was just frustrated at one point um, you know, when I lost my serve and um, to give her that break in the second set. Um, I just didn't feel like I was doing enough with the ball. So it was just, you know, just be aggressive, just go for it. And, uh, I was just a little more hesitant than usual. You're a fiancé there in the stands, Sasha yeah. Vujicic of the NBA. We know he's a free agent. So this is a guy used to very high level of competition. He seems like yeah. he is absolutely dying. <laughs> yeah, like I know. <laughs> Fighting his I know. Now. Well, poor guy. He's, he's good at watching women's tennis yeah, in the summer when everyone's on vacation and doing great things. And yeah, but no, it's so great to have a support because um, with the distance and the traveling and um, you know us having uh, different off seasons, it's a. Uh, we don't get to spend a lot of time and actually see each other on a week-to-week basis, so it's been nice to have him on the road. And what's it like for you now when you watch him compete? Yeah, I prefer playing. <laughs> a lot easier. Playing. It is so nerve-wracking to watch because you you have absolutely no control. Um, you know, only thing you can do is just encourage them and uh, you know shout and um, you know it's also a team sport, so it's a little bit different. But um, yeah, I, I prefer playing. You know, if even if it's a team sport, it's just so much tougher. And live scoring and all those things when you can't get a good connection and you're you know continents away is just the worst. Yeah. I, it must be great though with with two elite athletes uh, soon to be in the same family. I mean, there's got to be an
understanding of the ups and downs of your career yeah. and the things that you go through. There is. There's a, a great understanding of, of what we do, and that's there, and it's really nice to have. But, you know, when we come home, there's so much more to life th than sport. And I think that's, you know, even though that's the core in, in our careers, um, we know that, um, you know, a career can only go for so many years until your body holds up, until, um, you know, you wake up in the morning and say, I can't be a better player, I can't be better than what I do or what I've done. So um, when we get to a point where we can have a normal life and have a homey life, um, it will obviously be different. But um, it's nice to, to have that understanding with sport. Can we get a shot of the ring? I mean, we just have to because it's, I hate it's, 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 it's showing it all. Oh, it's, Very come on, Maria. It's super fabulous. Are you real quick, real quick, just a little. No, the worst is when you ask me. I never, I'm going to on purpose hide it now. <laughs> it's huge. I'm never, I'm never. Really, yeah, I don't like to show okay, this. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go back to tennis. I'll go back to tennis. One more tennis question real okay. quick. Really quickly, um, looking ahead in, in the tournament, we've talked about rivalries and how important yeah. those are for women's mm -hmm. tennis. Yes. You're in the same quarter of the draw with Wozniacki. I know you still have Peng Shui. She still has her match. Right. But if that were to be a quarterfinal mm -hmm. matchup, do you see this maybe building up in these next couple of years as a potential big rivalry? I think rivalries are very important in our sport. Um, I think that's why men's tennis is at such a high level right now, is you have those really great rivalries. Um, and, and yeah, I really hope that we can create one. Um, we've played a few times this year already, and um, if we get to that stage, it'll be great to play against the number one player in the world at a quarterfinal of a Grand Slam, but we still have one more to go. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> She has been installed as the favorite here, and she moves on. Maria Sharapova.